Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here with a video on the upcoming SR ticket we'll be receiving in FGONA. For those of you who are not aware, we will be having a download campaign very soon in early November, possibly right after Oniland, that will include a free SR ticket for all players. With this ticket, you'll be able to pick any 4-star servant that you want from a list. Now the only exception here is that the list does not include limited servants, so unfortunately no limited 4 stars like Mordred Rider or Zerker Nobu or any of the other summer servants. But outside of that, every other 4 star, story locked or not, is up for grabs. And that includes a wide array of servants. So to help you with your decision, I decided to make this video much like I did last year, going over what my top picks are for which 4 star you should pick. Now keep in mind, first and foremost, that you should always go for your favorite servant, just pick your waifu or husband though if you want. Because the way FGO works, any servant can be viable depending on team comp, and this way if you go for your favorites, you'll never be disappointed. But for those of you who are more gameplay focused, this list is going to be based on how strong each of these servants are, how useful they are for the majority of players, how rare they are, and of course how strong they are in the future meta. So I am taking into account any updates from JP. So with all of that said, let's take a look at the top picks. Coming in at number 7, we have Berserker Lancelot, aka Zerkerlot. Zerkerlot is a quick berserker who excels at wave clearing and farming. He is an ideal choice if you're looking for a very strong quick servant to build a team around, especially given that currently we are existing in a quick meta, which means he's going to have a lot of servants and tools to take advantage of that really accelerate his damage and his NP gain, not the least of which is Scotty. If you happen to have a Scotty and you missed out on Dante's in the summer event, then this is an ideal servant to pick up because he is one of the best servants to use within the Scotty system. He is a very consistent and capable NP looper at higher NP levels, and he's capable of some very strong damage output. But even if you're a newer player without Scotty and you're looking to build a quick team, Lancelot can help you out with a lot of the early story missions, and he remains a very strong pick even into the late game. So whether you need a strong wave clearer or you're looking for someone to be the focal point of your Scotty looping, Zerkerlot is your perfect pick. Just keep in mind that he isn't much of a conversationalist. Moving on from a servant who can't hold a conversation to some servants who are a bit too opinionated, at number 6 we have Saber Altar and Gawain. Now this may be cheating a bit since I'm including two servants in one spot, but in my defense they fundamentally play very similarly. Case in point, they are both AoE Buster Sabers who are very strong farmers. Both of them will also receive very good buffs in the future. Saber Altar is going to receive a 20% NP charge buff, while Gawain is going to receive a buff that allows him to produce sunlight so that he can take advantage of his own conditional buster buff. In both cases, both of these servants have a very strong AoE buster noble phantasm and an NP charge, which makes them exceptional for farming, especially given how few AoE sabers we have. So with that in mind, if you're looking for a buster servant to build a team around, or you're looking for some sabers you can farm with, you can really go with either of these servants, just pick your favorite, although if you're really pressed for a difference between them, saber Alter does have much stronger burst damage on her Noble Phantasm, while Gawain has much better non-Noble Phantasm damage from his 3 Buster cards and low cooldown buffs. And sticking with the Saber class at number 5, we have the old man himself, Yagyu. Now you knew he would be on this list because despite being a 4 star servant, he is widely considered one of the best art servants in the game, and for good reason. First and foremost, he has one of the strongest single target NPs for the Saber class. But in addition to that, he also excels in his versatility and utility due to his plethora of attack down debuffs. This combination of good damage and strong debuffs makes him perfect for tackling any kind of harder content or challenge quest. Since within an arts team, he's capable of putting out really high damage while also keeping the team alive. So if you're looking for an art servant to build around, or a servant who's capable of tackling really difficult challenge quests or later story missions, then I highly recommend taking a look into Yagyu. And at number 4 we have the power combo of Parvati and Fion. Okay, I cheated again a little bit by including two more servants in one spot, but there are just so many great servants to pick from that it's hard to limit it to just 7. And much like with Saber, Alter, and Gawain, these two perform a very similar role, although albeit for different team compositions. Both Parvati and Fion are excellent at NP spamming and even NP looping in farming teams. Thanks to his recent buffs, Fion has gone from becoming a joke character to arguably one of the best farmers in the game for an arts team. 
screen. All three of his skills now have some version of an NP charge or NP gain effect, which helps him excel when it comes to NP spamming. And with the right supports, he can even loop pretty consistently, which is going to become especially important when a certain little caster makes her appearance on the 5th anniversary. But even aside from his strong farming capabilities, he also has a good bit of utility thanks to his taunt and evade combination skill. A skill that's only been made better with time and can come in absolutely clutch for some of the harder boss fights in the game. But if you're more concerned with investing in a good farming servant now rather than planning for later, you might want to go with Parvati here. She is one of the premier servants when it comes to farming and NP spamming. Much like with Zerkerlot, if you happen to have a Scotty, you can pair her together with Parvati to make a very strong and consistent NP looping team. But even outside of the Scotty system, Parvati is a strong Lancer that excels in good DPS due to her low cooldown buffs, and you can easily build a strong quick team around her to carry you through the game. So if you're in the market for a good NP spammer, or you just need a good Lancer to carry you through some of the later game content, then I highly recommend picking up one of these two, depending on whether you favor arts teams or quick teams. Rounding off our top three is someone making a return appearance from last year's list, Nidocris. As I said last year, Nidocris is one of the best pure farmers in the game, and that role has only grown even more important over time. And the reason why she's one of the best farmers around is simply because she doesn't really need any kind of support to do her job. Thanks to her 100% NP charge and her high death rate on her Noble Phantasm, Nidocris can effectively and consistently farm weaker waves in one turn without any supports required. And if you do happen to provide her with some good supports or a Kaleidoscope, then most of the time she can even farm two waves. And much like with Fion, as we get closer to the arrival of Castoria, Nidocris is only going to get even better. So if you're looking for a serious farmer who doesn't really require all that much investment and is going to be eternally relevant due to the nature of how event farming works, then you can't go wrong with Nidocris. She is simply one of the best farmers available at any level. And speaking of returning servants, at number two we have the big man himself, Herc. Now it comes as no surprise, but Herc is one of the absolute best soloers in the game due to his ability to have so many guts effects active. But recently he's been buffed in JP to make this effect even stronger. He can now stack his own guts effect and he receives a powerful buster buff every time he revives. All of that on top of being one of the best carries in the game, especially for early content. If you're a new player and you pick up Herc, you can effectively bull rush your way through most of the early game content just using him alone. But that doesn't mean that he gets any less relevant later on. Even into the Lost Belts, Herc remains a very powerful Berserker who is capable of going toe to toe with even the strongest bosses. His playstyle is very simple since all you have to do is press the red button, but if you're a new player looking for a servant who can carry you through early game content while still being relevant later on, or even if you're a veteran player who's looking for a very strong boss killer or challenge quest servant, then I highly recommend picking up Hercules. And my top recommendation for which servant you should pick up with your free SR ticket is Emiya. Much like Fion, Emiya is a servant who started out pretty low tier but has since accelerated to the top thanks to a plethora of good buffs. And his most recent buff in JP has turned him into an absolute monster, as he's now able to change his Buster Noble Phantasm into an Arts one. And in my opinion, that change has made all the difference, as he has now become the most versatile 4 star servant available. With his Arts Noble Phantasm, he's able to basically Noble Phantasm twice in a row due to the immense NP refund that he gets. This makes him an excellent choice for farming, but not only that, Thanks to his incredible crit buffs that he's received earlier, he remains one of the top crit DPS servants in the entire game. And his ability to change between an Arts and Buster Noble Phantasm on the fly means that he can fit seamlessly into Arts teams, Buster teams, and crit teams. And he can work alongside some of the game's best supports while taking full advantage of their buffs like Merlin, Tamamo, and eventually Castoria. Simply put, if you're looking ahead and building for the future meta, or if you're looking for a versatile servant who can excel in a wide variety of team comps, then there is no better option than Emiya.
and those are my recommendations for which servants you should consider picking up with your free SR ticket. But always remember, this game is first and foremost about having fun, so you should never hesitate to just pick whichever servants are your favorite. And if you'd like to know more about any of the 4 stars I mentioned on this list or any of the other 4 stars available, then check out my servant spotlight playlist which will be linked in the description down below. I have an in-depth spotlight for every single 4 star that has been released in North America up until now. Also please do let me know in the comments who you plan on picking with your ticket. And if this video did help you, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you can catch all my videos as they go up on the channel. Lost Belt 3 is going to be coming up pretty soon, so I will be having spotlights for all of the new Lost Belt 3 servants, as well as a few videos on Lost Belt 3 itself, because that's going to be a very challenging Lost Belt compared to the previous ones. Also, if you haven't already, do follow us on Twitter, join the party on our Discord, and follow us on Twitch, where we're streaming nearly every day. And until next time, this is Soberoni, signing out. Later.